Today, we're gonna share six upgrades that you should avoid when you're building your new house, and one of them is gonna shock you. Let's get into it. So the first one is pretty simple, and it happens to almost everyone that buys a new construction house as they walk through the model, right? And we go through the model, it's amazing, and there's cookies out for us, fresh baked cookies and water, and it's just an amazing thing. We get to see the amenities and do a tour through the neighborhood, and then we pick the house. So we're going under contract, and then the design center comes in. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, the design center is where people make a lot of mistakes, and really, you could spend spend half a day, even a whole day going through and designing your absolute dream house and it'll completely blow the budget. And it's not a good experience. <laughs> I've been there with clients. I've spent those days and then all of a sudden it's $250,000 over the budget or 300 grand. We've completely blown the budget all together. Want to make sure you have a budget, but you want to make sure you avoid some huge mistakes. So if one of that we jump into always, and you know, if you follow our channel, we're a huge fan of flooring. Now, in new construction, this is a really tricky conversation about how much do you spend in upgrades in flooring. Uh, recently, I had a client who moved into a different market and was moving into a different market. And they're like, OK, what are we going to do with the flooring? And first things first, he said, I want hardwoods everywhere. First floor, second floor, third floor, everywhere except the wet spaces in the kitchen. We went through and I actually asked the builder's agent. I said, hey, what kind of flooring selections are you seeing across this 300 house neighborhood? And he said, well, I don't have any that have all hardwoods throughout. And the client was like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't know I moved from a different market. And that was the standard in that market. And again, that's controversial. I know, I know, but it's very market specific. Um, I have hardwoods in my house. Um, I have carpet in my house, carpets on the hardwoods, but I live in an older house in a different part of town where that's was the standard. And so when you have some of these new construction houses, it could be all hardwoods or luxury vinyl. It could be that, or even uh, different tile choices. Make sure you find out what's going on in the area and in the subdivision and what the standards are. And then you can make your choices but this was a $40,000 decision to put hardwood everywhere. Just like that, I've actually had the opposite happen where a client said, I'll skip, and they got lucky and the vendor screwed up and put hardwoods in their house. The client really wanted carpet, but they got this upgrade for free. So they actually put the carpet over the hardwood, which is a huge asset to that client going forward because in the future, if someone wants it, they can actually pull that carpet up, have the hardwoods refinished, and there'll be brand new hardwood floors for that future buyer or for them in the future. Okay, next. You want to talk about the appliances. Typically, when you're buying in one subdivision, there is an entire bulk package that the builder's done or they've partnered with one particular vendor. And this can be a great thing. Often in our area, the washer, dryer, and the refrigerator are extra. So you want to find out, are they included? Or are they not included? This may be an upgrade you want to avoid, or it may be convenience factor that you do want to go ahead and do it if you're getting that bulk discount and you like that brand and that it's going to match some of the other choices in the house. Recently, we had a client bought some and the appliances were extremely custom. They were GE monogram and they were rose gold. So we actually wanted the rose gold refrigerator, dishwasher and fixtures because it made all the difference. It had the ambience of the room. It was very highly designed. It was really a designer builder that had its whole vibe going. And so we didn't want to mess that up by bringing in a stainless steel, you know, fridge there. So that was something that was absolutely worth the upgrade. But if it's just typical stainless steel and you may have a particular passion for a particular brand, you know, it may be a sub or a wolf or a sub zero, who knows what it might be. So you can actually wait and do that upgrade on your own after the fact. And once you own the house as your own upgrade versus builder pricing it out through their vendors. Another place where upgrades can absolutely kill you from getting a great deal in new construction is the cabinets and the hardware. Now, when we go through houses, we're always looking for the slow close drawers and the slow close cabinets. Each one of those hinges, and most of them have two and sometimes three, cost $40 a piece. Yeah, that's right, $40 per side. 
per door. So that can be a huge thing in resale to see if those are there. We're always checking for those with our clients in our market. But if you're having to add those with new construction and not have them, you're going to have to pick and choose where you want them. Which ones are the high volume ones that you absolutely want? Or do you want them all together? Again, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars on upgrades on cabinets and on the hardware. Now, actually, the hardware, the poles and the hinges are some of the easiest upgrades to do on your own when you have and you own the house and to make your selections. Now, this could be a huge thing to make sure you get a great deal because you could have a custom cabinet person come in and either do custom cabinets for you, or you could actually have someone come in and change out some of the poles, which will really make your house stand out against the competition when you go to sell it. So this is an interesting technique that we've had really good success with. We didn't like any of the choices that were there as far as the poles. And we actually went through and had someone come through, make some different choices on the poles and hinges. And it made a huge difference. And it was actually one of the top three reasons that their buyer a few years later chose that over some of the competition because it was completely custom. And that made a difference in the market of the moment. Let's talk about tile work. Now, when you go in the model, you'll see all kinds of things. The backsplash, it'll be all decked out all the way across. It'll be tiled behind the stove. And you may even have some custom tile work around the mantle or slate or even a stack stone. You may have a two-story fireplace. And this is a good place to go through and price out in the design center. But you may want to make sure, is it something that's really a value? You can actually have a stack stone fireplace done in your own after you've moved in in just a couple of days. And yes, you have people coming in and out of the house but if it may end up saving you 30 or even 40%, it may be a choice that you're going to choose to do that as opposed to paying that premium in the process. So you just have to go through and decide, do I want the backsplash all the way around uh, or just behind the stove? Or like you say, you may want a custom fireplace, you know, and it's got a two story, really dramatic thing. That could be another opportunity to really have a standout focus finish feature in the property. And it really only takes a week or so post-closing for that custom feature to really stand out against your competition when we're going to sell it in the future. All right, our next upgrade that we talk about with new construction is the custom closets. Now this has such a broad variance and it can be a huge asset. Some builders actually have a custom closet that they do and deliver in every single one of their properties. And some of them don't. And some people have different preferences that they want different finishes in different certain sections of their house. And so this is something where we've had some great success standing out and having the work done when we're finished and when we've owned it. So we can get the basic build out, have it enough, but then actually have a craftsman come in and you can get different wood, different design, and actually have a whole lot of efficiency in your closets. And we actually have two or three folks here in Nashville that we've done this with and offer different finishes and different designs, which will really help you stand out and actually help you enjoy living in the house more because the closet is a space that you actually spend a lot of time in and having it feel just right and launching you into your day or welcoming you home at the end of your day really can make a difference in how much you enjoy the home. Now, this one often gets overlooked and it can get really big, really fast. And it's the window coverings. And it can be the blinds, it could be the shutters, it could be the hardware, and man, it could be all about the drapes too. We actually get into it and start talking about the measurements and do we have the measurements of the design as soon as we leave the design center. Because some people will prioritize and way overpay for window treatments for the house so they're there when they move in that first day. And actually, with a little bit of planning, we'll have the design, the builders have the floor plan and have the measurements. We can actually ask the designer to go ahead and measure all the windows for us. And then we can coordinate with an outside vendor to have that come in within the first day or so post closing and yet again end up with some higher quality materials you know there may only be a few selections from the builder or from that builder's vendor just to get that done and to kind of move on or we may end up going through and 
in our area, it's really common to have plantation shutters or cafe curtains um, in the house. And we actually have a couple of vendors that we work with that can do that right away, have them pre-made off-site and come inside in about half a day, have them completely installed and ready to go. With a little bit of planning across the build timeline, which could be as much as 18 months, we can actually have some of those outside vendors ready to go and really help you make this house your home. So what questions do you have about upgrades? Let us know in the comments below. We'll get back to you right away as quick as we see it, but let us know because we want to hear from you. We're putting this out there for you and can't wait to hear from you. Okay, another one that comes up all the time is fencing. And almost always it comes up in the subdivisions that there's some kind of rule in the HOA around the different types of fencing. And there's all kinds of workarounds with that because sometimes you'll have a split rail fence or a cross section fence that you have to have that your dogs or animal or children won't stay within. Well, there's ways to work around that and to work with that. You can actually put up a see-through mesh that, that'll match the HOA uh, responsibilities there, but you may need a fence and there will be some fencing requirements in the HOA. So just start to talk with the designers about that. Often we run into situations where there is two fence choices and one vendor that does it all for the neighborhood. Now that may be an upgrade that you choose to do it, but if it ends up that there's three or four vendors and five or six choices, this may be an upgrade you wanna avoid and wait to do that after the fact because it has a little bit more leniency and you can end up going through and making that selection after the fact. Now, this is an upgrade that a lot of people don't talk about when they talk about new construction and the upgrades that come in and it's an extra amenity. Um, it could be as much as an extra large patio pour or a fire pit on the outside or a covered porch or a screen porch and way overpriced things four or five times what they call what the cost of that upgrade is because they just don't want to go through the hassle. They just don't want to deliver that or that be part of this process. So we've actually helped clients and guided them to get that goal and that improvement done later and after the fact and still get it done in a timely way. You just have to go through and price some of those things out because sometimes the builders just really don't want to do it. And they're ultimately calling a vendor that you could have called and saved that money. And they're just paying that extra premium and profit into the process. It's something that just doesn't get talked about that often builders can and will price things just way out of market because they just don't want to do it. Hey, so for, thanks for joining us for these six things that you should avoid on your next new construction home. What surprised you? Drop us a comment below and let us know what we could be bringing to you on our next video. Thanks for joining and uh, we hope we've earned the opportunity for you to subscribe and we'll keep bringing great content like this to you in the weeks ahead. See you soon.